What's going on everyone, Desktops Gaming here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I figured we'd do something a little different because we have something a little different. Uh, this video is sponsored by Arctic AC. They actually sent over their new Freezer 50 cooler, this really overbuilt um, air cooler uh, that they put together. This is actually a port over from their TR4 cooler that they designed, uh, also in the Freezer line. Like I said, that one was built for Threadripper. Uh, they basically took that and then put it with an AM4 mounting bracket. Uh, so if you guys checked out our last video, we actually did a build in the Deepcool CL500 case, uh, touted as a really great airflow performance case. Uh, so we figured we'd put that to the test today. Uh, currently we have a uh, 360 AO installed in this one, actually one from Deepcool, their new 360 EX RGB edition. And we wanted to pit the performance against a really beefy air cooler to a 360 AO. Now, like I said, some people just don't want to go with AOs at all. Some people prefer sticking all air pros and cons to each, but we wanted to kind of weigh both options today and test out this beefy cooler since Arctic provided it for us. It should be launching today uh, as soon as this video goes live so you guys can check it out. Um, like I said, we're going to show some benchmarks, probably just do some Cinebench runs today uh, just to test the CPU performance. Um, we're going to leave the case kind of in its current configuration. Uh, we did push pull and I'll link uh, in the cards up here if you guys want to see us how actually how this build came together. Uh, but we did end up doing push pull on this one. We'll probably just when we take this AO out, We'll leave three uh, intakes in the front, and then we'll leave our two exhaust and one in the back uh, for exhaust as well, uh, but not push pull since there's no radiator in place once we put the air cooler in place. Uh, so let's cut to uh, doing that. Um, like, so we'll go and get this new cooler swapped out after we finish testing this guy, and then we'll check out the performance of each. So now that all the testing's done and out of the way for the 360 AO we had installed, we need to swap it out for the Freezer 50. But first, let's take a look at what's included in the box here. Go ahead and unbox it and check it out. So it looks like we have the cooler itself in this rather large box. Do we have anything down here? Looks like the mounting hardware is going to be down here. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Yeah, it looks like our mounting hardware is all at the bottom. Another box here. And there's a support bracket for the cooler itself. Alright, so first I guess let's take the cooler out of its box. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I think this should handle it. Um, looks to be a pretty good size air cooler. Uh, it's actually set up in push pull too, it looks like, because uh, there is a fan in the middle. Yeah. Uh, so you have a pretty large, uh, let's see, what is that? Uh, these 140s, I'm assuming. Yeah, like I said, they're set up in a push pull configuration. We can get that on in view there. It looks like there is, like I said, that fan in the middle and then the fan on the outside forcing it out so definitely should have plenty of airflow moving through here now uh, it looks like that just kind of clips to slide up in the middle yeah because we have two uh looks like daisy chainable fans here then the uh addressable header here for the rgb still has some rgb accents coming through looks like on the sides here and looks like behind the arctic logo itself so yeah definitely uh can be taking up a good bit of room in the case you guys can see there um, let's go and pull out the mounting hardware. Got a nice little box here. Anything else in there? Let's see what we have included. Uh, looks like we have a, an included back plate here. The two looks like mounting rails. Let's look a little attached to. I'm assuming the ends there. We have some MX4 compound, uh, though I'm sure we'll be using a tube we already have, but that's nice to include. And it looks like we have the mounting brackets here for everything. And it looks like some screw covers, maybe. You don't want to actually be able to see any of their hardware. So yeah, it looks like we have four longer standoffs and four shorter standoffs here. Nope, six shorter standoffs here. And then some screws to cinch it in place. All right, so let's move the case around. Let's get the AO out now 
and then we'll start installation. So now that we've removed the AO out of the uh, front here, now we can go ahead and uh, get the cooler installed. We've already pulled the uh, center fan out here because you will need to go down through the fin sinks there to actually get to these screws for the mounting. Uh, so we've already installed the fans back at the front. Like I said, back plate came off with the cooler, so we gotta put that back on with the mounting hardware and then we can get the cooler installed. So let's go ahead and do that. This thing about having cut out in your motherboard. Or in the motherboard tray, I should say. So you don't have to take anything out to change a cooler out or anything like that. When it's all right here. Uh-oh, I think we may have found our first problem with this cooler since it is so large. Taller RAM is going to be an issue. Hmm. All right, well, it won't be a like-to-like -like test then because we won't be able to use the, uh, the G-Skill RAM here unless I were to remove the heat spreaders, but it looks like it will conflict with that front fan. I don't believe it moves. Um, let me see if this fan will move at all. I'm just a touch of paste on there. Let's get rid of that. I'll have paste everywhere. Uh, but yeah, I don't believe this front fan can slip up at all. It looks like it hugs the shroud pretty closely. Yeah, it is hugging the shroud pretty closely. Uh, but we're just obstructing just ever so slightly. Um, we go to set it in. That shroud's actually still touching the heat spreader on the RAM. So let's try it with a different kit of RAM. Let me see what the shortest kit I have is, and then uh, we'll see what other clearance issues we might run into. So let me grab some RAM real quick. All right, so I grabbed some RAM I had on hand here. Let's go and remove these Trident Z sticks. And we'll compare some sizing to, because uh, these do have the taller spreaders on them. So let's see what else we have here. I believe the Excalibur RAM here from Team Group is even taller, so I don't think that's gonna work either. But I pulled it just as comparison. That's the only issue you really have to worry about with these larger air coolers is um, you do end up with a bit of clearance issues. So we're going to line the uh, dims up here at the bottom. Yeah, these are going to be even taller, as you can see. So those aren't going to work very well. I uh, have some XPG RAM as well. Uh, my last option would be some Vengeance uh, LPX. Uh, it's the only low profile kit I have on hand. So we'll try those. The only issue I was going against those was um, they're only 3200 speed. So I still want to test one of the 3600 speed kit. So let me see what this XPG kit's looking like. I believe these are gonna be pretty similar in height. I would say I don't want to split the uh, RAM modules up from going into single channel. If I just scoot them over, that's not going to work. So, yeah, I believe these are going to be about the same height. Line the dims up. Yeah, like I said, they're, if anything, just a little bit taller. Uh, so, like I said, it is going to be a bit of an issue. So, I'm going to uh, run and grab some of the uh, LPX RAM. Like I said, we'll just have to do some thermal testing, you know, in the meantime of that. Uh, but actually, I'll be right back once I swap that RAM out. All right, so we're gonna do a little close up here where we can all can see what I'm talking about. Uh, luckily, I got a friend of mine that has some uh, Vengeance LPX in his system currently, so I'm just gonna swap him some of the RAM I have on hand in the meantime. But as you can see, cooler is pretty massive and it is gonna overhang a bit. Um, considering it pretty much covers all but the last dim slot there, so all but slot number four. So uh, definitely if you're gonna be going with a cooler like this or any kind of bigger air cooler like this that doesn't have some kind of offset for um, you know, your RAM and everything like that, does have a bit of a, of a protrusion there. 
and uh, this can't this front fan here can't really move because uh, the actual other fan has to clip into place you can see I removed the uh, center fan there because that's actually where you access the mounting brackets so they're located at the bottom there uh, like I said that just clips into place so this will actually just slide down in top of this to fit into place there after you secure the cooler in place uh, but like I said we are experiencing some clearance issues uh, getting to that second dim there so uh, luckily again like I said, got a friend coming in clutch um, with some LPX RAM today so I'm going to swap him a kit of that out and then we'll continue on so let's hop into some uh, benchmarks here uh, like so we did a just a Cinebench stress test on the CPU since we were testing coolers uh, like to like here uh, for the AO that we're running, like I said, that was the 360EX RGB edition from Deepcool. Uh, we set up in push-pull, uh, so three fans in the front, three fans behind the rad. Uh, like I said, again, a push-pull configuration for cooling. Uh, we let those ramp up on their own. We actually didn't run them at full speed. We just let it ramp based off of the CPU temp. Uh, so for one run of Cinebench R20, uh, we hit about 63C. Uh, that was just one, one pass. And then we went back, and this is at stock, by the way. This is running at pretty much uh, four gigahertz the entire time. We didn't drop any clocks or anything. Uh, so like I said, it was 63, 63C for the one run stock. And then we came back and did a little more of a stress test, let it run and cycle for about 15 minutes, uh, just running R20 again. Uh, like I said, and after 15 minutes, we actually went up by one degree. So we had 64C and then maintained you know, four gigahertz just fine. Uh, moving on to the overclock, uh, we put it up to you know just an all-core overclock of 4.3, um, you know just locked it in steady there. We wanted to see you know if that much um, just a 300 megahertz offset would make much of a difference, and we were able to raise it by a little bit. Uh, so the first test pass we ran of that uh, just one run through of our 20, we hit about 66 C on average, and then uh, we came back into the stress test another 15 minute test, um, you know at 4.3 gigahertz, and we came up to 68 C. Uh, so Still not bad overall. Uh, you know, never dropped below 4,300 megahertz or 4.3 gigahertz. Uh, we would like to compare the scores, like to like, uh, as well. But um, you know, like I said previously, before we had to swap to a low-profile kit of memory, and we have uh, a set of the Corsair Vengeance LPX, but it's 3,200 megahertz. Uh, the when we tested the AO, it was a set of G Skill 3,600 megahertz. So. Uh, that would that will affect the score ever so slightly so it wasn't really a fair comparison to do uh, between the two just seeing scores so we we're mainly checking temperatures over time all right so moving on to the freezer 50 uh, we did a stock run on this one as well bar 20 uh, with just one run through uh, so we maxed out at a delta about 65c and then moving on to the stress test and this is running stock as well we hit 66 c so i mean only a, a degree increase in 15 minutes so uh, definitely touts that the cl500 has really good airflow so i was able to pretty much remove a good bit of heat from the case and we only saw you know one degree increase over the 15 minutes it was stress testing and that was at uh, 4000 megahertz or 4 gigahertz and then for the overclock we pushed it up to again the same 4.3 uh, we did all core on the ao test uh, for this one one run uh, we hit about 70.5 c on average um, like I said, after just one run and actually held a steady state of a little over 71 degrees C uh, after stress testing it for 15 minutes. And like I said, that was at 4.3 gigahertz. That was the overclock test. So like I said, overall, a really solid uh, performing cooler. Um, the only con being, like I said, we had to swap to some lower profile memory, give up a little bit of RGB to do so. Uh, but I think that about wraps this up here as far as our benchmarking goes. Uh, you know, we just did a short benchmark for this just to see performance comparing the two together uh, so I think we'll hop back into full view and wrap this up all right guys so we just finished up some benchmarks there uh, as you can see uh, from the benchmarks we're seeing some really good temperatures out of this and of course we did test it with the front side panel on but you know took it off uh, for the end of the video here where we didn't get too many reflections uh, this has been an absolutely impressive cooler we weren't seeing any temperatures much over what we were getting out of our AIO I mean maybe by two to three C tops, like I said, and that was with an AO with six fans, uh, except the AO was set up in push pull. So, um, you know, for this configuration, went with three fans in the front and taking out the top and the rear. Um, again, overall impressed. Art did a great job on this one. Uh, again, you will have to be mindful when shopping around for RAM because, uh, like I said, we did have to get a uh, shorter 
a kit of RAM. Uh, luckily, a friend of ours had some Vengeance LPX on hand that we could swap for a kit of ours just to test this cooler out. Uh, so luckily, you know, we did have that, but do keep that in mind if you're shopping around for this cooler or any cooler that's in its similar form factor, uh, you wanna make sure your RAM, you know, doesn't have too, too high of heat spreaders uh, or, you know, you wanna make sure that you can clear uh, putting a cooler this size in its place. We did have to sacrifice a little bit of RGB there swapping out from the original G skill kit we had. And unfortunately, uh, this was a 3200 megahertz speed kit as well. So we couldn't do like to like testing on the sentiment scores uh, because we did have a 3600 megahertz speed kit in here prior. Uh, that's the one we're running with the AO. But this is still a 3200 megahertz speed kit. Um, you know, of course, our Vengeance LPX is solid. We just didn't uh, feel like ordering a 3600 megahertz kit of something low profile like the Vengeance LPX uh, just to test this cooler. So uh, we would still wanted to at least test thermal performance, you know, after uh, benching the two back to back, you know, because we did bench the AO uh, for one run of cinnamon bench and then later on a 15 minute kind of more torture test, uh, just letting it cycle for about 15 minutes to see what the, you know, max temp of the loop would be. Um, and for the AO, like we showed in the benchmarks there, we seem to hit equilibrium at about 65, 64, um, even with it overclocked under load. The highest we got on this, you know, from the benchmarks that we were looking at there was about 70.5, 70.1 after a 15 minute stress test. So, I mean, comparing the overclocked AO to the overclocked air cooler here, I mean, we're only talking about a Delta of maybe three degrees C, four, if you want to round that off. Uh, so like I said, overall for something that's much quieter uh, than the AO was even running at hundred um, percent for something that's, you know, like I said, that's where most people go to air coolers for something that's going to be less maintenance down the line because so long as you keep the heat sinks clean, and the fans are still spinning, there's no other points of failure. Whereas with an AO, you know, you do have to worry about a pump going out eventually. You do have to worry about permeation through the tubing, but I mean, typically that's gonna be, you know, five to seven years down the line. So if that matters to you, that's up to you. Uh, but I think that about wraps it up. Thank you guys again for checking this one out. Uh, it's been a blast to work with this cooler. Thanks again, Arctic, for sending this one over. Uh, check out some of the other products. We'll link their uh, Instagram and um, their product page down below so you can check out uh, what else they have to offer because you know we've used some of their other in the past and if you do like aos uh, we've used their uh, liquid freezer too uh, a good bit in the past as well because we have a 240 millimeter version of that so if you guys want to see that in a video let me know in the comments down below again appreciate you guys coming by take it easy